The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was a Monday, 2.43 p.m., and warm in Los Angeles for that time of day. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. My partner is George Frankly. We'd gotten a call about a neighborhood disturbance. Problem over a baseball. I mentioned it to George. We've got a problem, George. Baseball. I love baseball, Kate. Martha and I, we went to Dodger Stadium just last night, Kate. The Dodgers played in Cincinnati last night, George. Yeah, no trouble parking. You want to go with us, Martha, me to a Dodger game, Kate? No trouble parking. We've got a problem, George. Let's roll. <laughs> Three p.m. George and I drove to the neighborhood to question possible witnesses. One of the first rules of problem solving is getting the facts. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, sir. Sure. Why not? Go ahead. I mean, shoot. I got nothing to hide. Yes, sir. You notice any kids playing baseball around here today? Kids? Yes, sir. Playing baseball? Yes, yeah, sir. That's what we want to know. Kids playing baseball. Not really. There's hardly enough room in the store for the new ski jump, let alone a baseball game. Yes, sir. We didn't mean in your store, sir. Besides, I wasn't here all day. Where were you? When? Then. Then? Then. There. What were you doing there? Where? There. Nothing. Not much, anyways. Uh, just watching a bunch of kids play baseball. Do you know where they are? Who? The kids. When? Then? No. Now. Yes. Where? There. <laughs> What happened, son? We lost our baseball, ma'am. Uh-huh. A lot of that going around. Yes, but this ball is different. Different? Yeah, you know, not the same. How was it different? For one thing, it wasn't ours. It was my dad's. It was a special ball. It was signed by Babe Ruth. The King of Swat? Sultan of Swat. My dad finds that I lost his souvenir. He'll murder me. You gotta find that ball. When was the ball last seen? When Nell belted it. I really teed off on it. Good pitch? High and tight. Right in my wheelhouse. I got the meat of the bat on it, and I was playing left field. Sailed over my head, still rising. I lost it in the sun. She hit it a ton. It's as if it vanished in thin air. We can't find it anywhere. My dad's gonna skin me. We'll do the best we can. Let's measure the area, sketch it on paper, and run it through the computer. It'll be easier to sift through the information once we can see it. Right. Anything else, kids? Don't think so. Just that I need that ball by the time my dad gets back from his business trip. Or he'll rip me to shreds. Yeah. yeah. We'll get back to you. 3.45 p.m. We asked Jenny Carlson, our computer expert in the lab, to help us out. She copied the information George gave her from his sketch onto the computer. All right. This is a map of the area. Here is home plate where the ball was hit. This is left field, the direction the ball took. What's that? That's the billboard, remember, George? Yeah, right. Now, if the ball landed in here, the kids would have found it. But the left fielder was here, and he said the ball went over his head. Well, if it landed behind the left fielder, they should have found it, too. It wasn't there. They looked, we looked, no ball. What if it had gone farther against the sign? That would be a heck of a clout. Do you think she could have hit it that far? She said she got it all. Well, if the ball hit the sign, this is what might have happened. It would have bounced here. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Yeah, the ball would bounce off the sign at the same angle it hit the sign. If this angle is 50 degrees, then this angle will be 50 degrees. Now, if the ball hit somewhere else, this might have happened. Uh-huh. Or it might have done this. In every case, the ball bounces off the sign at the same angle it hit the sign. Well, if it hit the sign, it would have to be somewhere in here. There was a house there, George. Let's roll. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm Monday, MathNet. This is my partner, George Frankly. MathNet. Mind if we ask you a few questions? Like what? These kids lost a valuable baseball. We have reason to suspect it might be on your property. We'd like to search the grounds for information. Mind if we take a look around? What would their baseball be doing on my property when they play way over there? The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. What? It's mathematics and physics. We think the ball hit that sign. If it did, it should have bounced on your property, probably on your porch. Did you hear anything like that? A baseball bouncing on my porch? Yes, ma'am. No, but then I've been gone most of the day. Remember what time you left? I remember exactly. I forgot my shopping list. I had to go back inside to get it, and I noticed the clock. It said exactly 1.45. Yes, ma'am. Mind if we check that porch? Okay. Watch the step. 
We went over the property with a fine-tooth comb. No sign of the ball. Let's take a look at that sign. Think the ball could have done that? Could be. Let's get back to the office. We'll keep working on it, kids. I sure hope you solve it. Your dad? Yeah, he joined quarterly. Morning, Jenny. Did that new information help? Sure did. You know what? What? Look. That's the house. If the ball hit the sign where you think it did, it would have headed right for Mrs. McGregor's front door. It must be in the house. Couldn't be. The door is closed. But look at this. The ball hit here. It would have ricocheted and gone right here. If the door was closed, it would have bounced into this area. We look there. No ball. Kate, wait a minute. Remember what Mr. McGregor said? Hello, ma'am. This is George Frankly, MapNet. Ma'am, when you went back into the house for your shopping list, did you close the door? You didn't? If the ball was hit then, it must be in the house. Ma'am, we're coming back to see you. We have reason to believe the baseball is in your house. Mind if we look around? Not really, but that's easier said than done. How's that, ma'am? My house has been stolen. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was 9.43 a.m. We were working on the case of the missing baseball. My partner is George Franklin. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to refresh our memories. Hello, ma'am. This is George Franklin, MathNet. Ma'am, when you went back into the house for your shopping list, did you close the door? You didn't? If the ball was hit then, it must be in the house. Ma'am, we're coming back to see you. We have reason to believe the baseball is in your house. Mind if we look around? Not really, but that's easier said than done. How's that, ma'am? My house has been stolen. Tuesday, 10.22 a.m. We decided to question Mrs. McGregor about her problem. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? I've been better. Wipe your feet and get off my sidewalk. Want to tell us what happened, ma'am? I went over to my sister's house last night to watch the Dodger game. You have a sister living in Cincinnati? On television. I spent the night there, came back this morning, and the house was gone. Did you notice anything unusual yesterday before you left? No, nothing. Well, wait. There was a man. A man? Yes, you know. A man. Deep voice. Has to shave. Yes, ma'am, but where was he? Sitting in a pickup truck across the street, wearing glasses. I didn't think too much about it at the time. There have been a lot of strange ducks around here lately. How's that? Well, for the past six months, people have been pestering me, trying to buy my house, rent it, rent a room. Well, I'm sick of it. I told them I wouldn't rent and I wouldn't sell. That's why I put up all those signs. Guess I missed one, though. How's that, ma'am? Should have put one up that said, do not steal house. 10.49 and a half a.m. We needed more facts, and we needed to figure out what those facts meant. I figure there are three ways to dispose of a house, Kate. Uh-huh, that's about right. They could blow it up? Yeah, but there would be a lot of debris around. Right. Or someone could have dismantled it. it. Takes a long time to dismantle a house, George. So that's out. The third way is to jack it up, put it on a flatbed truck, and haul it away. And if that's how they did it, someone must have seen or heard something. We decided to question the neighbors to see if they saw or heard anything suspicious. Morning, sir. We're MathNet, working on the case of the missing baseball. I wonder if you could help us out. I'm not very good at finding missing baseball. Yes, sir. I found a missing golf ball once. Uh-huh. It was in the weeds. Yes, sir. It was, you know, round. Most of them are. What a day that was. Last night, sir, were you home, and did you see or hear anything unusual? Yeah, I was home. I was watching a Dodger game. You live in Cincinnati? No, it was on television. Yes, sir. Did you hear anything suspicious? Like what? Oh, maybe a house being stolen? No, nothing like that. There was one thing, though. Yes, sir. In the 14th inning of the ball game, my TV went on the fritz. You know, couldn't see a picture. How long did that last? Not very long. Dodgers had two men on, nobody out. Next thing I know, the Reds are batting in the last of the 14. Funny game, baseball. It's a game of inches. Now, if they trucked the house away, the truck would have left tracks. I don't see any. Maybe they put ramps down to cover their tracks. Maybe. Let's get the facts. Hello, ma'am. Any progress? No, ma'am. That baseball is just as missing as it ever was. Mind if we take another look around? Be my guest. Uh-huh. Ever seen these glasses, ma'am? Nope. Oh, wait. They look like the glasses that man I was telling you about was wearing. Deep voice. Shave. That's right. 
what would they be doing here? We'll have the boys in the lab run a make on them. Come on, George, let's roll. Yeah, but... <coughs> p.m. George sent the glasses to the lab to check the prescription and to see if they could help us identify the owner while I went back over the facts. Is that the lab? No, it was Martha. She needs more peppers for the meatloaf. You want to stop for dinner tonight, Kate? Maybe. What are you having? I don't know. She didn't say. She just said to stop on the way home for peppers for the meatloaf. Maybe you're having meatloaf. Oh, I doubt it. How's that? It's difficult to make. She's out of peppers. Uh-huh. Let's go over the facts, George, and see if we can make some sense out of them. The ball was lost yesterday. It probably bounced off the sign. Right. Ricocheted over to Mrs. McGregor's porch, probably right through the open door. So it's inside the house. Right. But the house is missing. What does that tell us? Somebody wanted that baseball real bad. What else? We find the house, we got the ball. <sighs> okay. The house wasn't blown up, we know that. Right. It wasn't dismantled either. And we know that it could have been hauled away in a truck. So what does that leave us? What's the only possible answer? I've got it. Good. The house is still there. <sighs> What's the only other answer? I don't know. Mathnet, Monday. Oh, hello, Howie. No, no luck on the missing ball yet. Hmm. We'll keep in touch. I understand. Howie? Yeah. His dad's due back in three days. If we don't find that missing baseball, yeah. his father's going to turn him inside out. Stymied, Kate. The house with the ball in it is gone. It's just gone. It couldn't have just flown away. Or could it? The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. Wednesday, 2.43 p.m. It was hot in L.A. and hadn't snowed for months. We were working on the case of the missing baseball. We figured the ball was in Mrs. McGregor's house, but it had been stolen. The house, that is. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to refresh our memories. Mathnet, Monday. Oh, hello, Howie. No, no luck on the missing ball yet. <laughs> we'll keep in touch. I understand. Howie? Yeah. His dad's due back in three days. If we don't find that missing baseball, yeah. his father's going to turn him inside out. Stymied, Kate. The house with the ball in it is gone. It's just gone. It couldn't have just flown away. Or could it? George and I returned to Mrs. McGregor's tent to see if we'd missed anything. I don't think we missed anything, Kate. George, look at the trees. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a... They're naked. Right, no leaves. Must have been a heck of a wind. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But look at those trees over there, and over there. They're still dressed. How could the wind have blown the leaves off these trees and not off those trees? Maybe it wasn't a natural wind. You mean an unnatural wind? Yes. What if it was a helicopter? And the downdraft from the rotors blew the leaves off these trees? Mm -hmm. Sure, why not? But is a helicopter capable of lifting a house? Let's ask a man who owns one. Do you know much about helicopters, General Scarlet? If I don't know it, it ain't worth knowing. Do you know who invented the helicopter, General Scarlet? Yes, I do. Ask me another question. We asked General Scarlet if it were possible for a helicopter to move a small house. He said yes and showed us a videotape of one of the few choppers that could do it. A specially designed model known as the XY313. We asked him if there were any in the area. Well, we have two right here on the base, and there are two others owned by airplane leasing companies. One's in Los Angeles, the other's in Oxnard. Now we were on the trail. We figured the house must have been airlifted, and the only two companies who could have done it were in our area. We were home free. You sure? Well, thanks anyway. Did they rent the chopper two night before last, George? They didn't. Their XY313 is down for repairs. Hasn't flown for two weeks. Impossible. And the other company didn't rent theirs out either? Nope. Not much call for a chopper like that, I guess, Kate. One that lifts houses, I mean. I felt sure we had him this time. Mathnet, Monday. Uh, oh, hello, Howie. No, I know. Not yet. Your dad's gonna be home in two days. Uh, really? We're working on it. Howie? Yeah. His dad's gonna make him walk the plank if we don't get that baseball back. We decided to check with Ginny in the lab to see if those glasses could give us some information. Hi, mathematicians. I'm running a check on the glasses. Find anything yet? 38 things. 38? You know, between 37 and 39. Uh-huh. 
Those frames have been manufactured for only about a year. So far, 38 have been sold in our area. What are you doing, Jenny? What are those numbers? I called into the local optometrist database to check on the glasses that you brought in. The frames have a serial number, and I sent out the glasses to get the prescription. There are the numbers. I don't know what those numbers mean. Let's ask an expert. George, call an optometrist and find out what visual problem someone has who needs that prescription. Jenny, will you find out how many of the 38 frames have that prescription? Sure can, Kate. I just have to search the database. Three, Kate. Great. And there are the names and addresses. Kate, the doctor says it's a pretty common prescription. They're reading glasses for someone with the slightest stigmatism. Then someone could fly a helicopter without them? Sure. Or play baseball, or ride a pony, or fall off a log, uh -huh. or... Uh-huh. Anything but read. That's right. Or any other close work. You know, like needlepoint, or building a model train, or picking aphids off baby roses, or... The names of the owners of the glasses are Justin Michaels, Clarence Sampson, and Alfred Fox. That's what two X's, Kate. That doesn't help me much. How's that? I don't know any of these guys. Don't worry, George. Huh? You will. Thanks, Jenny. Anytime. We still on for Saturday, George? Sure are. Martha's looking forward to it. Going to have meatloaf again? Sure. I can't come, George. I'll be right back. Watch the phone, George. Answer the phone, George. Mathnet. Who? Scarlet. No, this isn't Kate. It's frankly Scarlet, and I don't give... Oh, General Scarlet. I see. Thank you, sir. Got something? Maybe. Said he forgot about one XY313, right in our backyard. A fellow has one at Burbank. Says he rents it out sometimes. Here's the number. Yes, sir. Kate Monday, MathNet. I understand you have an XY313 for rent. Uh-huh. Didn't happen to rent it a couple of nights ago, did you? Uh-huh. Could you tell me who you rented it to? I'm sorry. Could you tell me to whom you rented it? Yes, I'll hold. Uh-huh. Clarence Sampson. Do you have an address on him? Uh-huh. 727 Bluff Drive. Thank you. That's the name of one of the owners of the glasses, Kate. <laughs> what a coincidence. Two guys with the same name and address. It's one guy, George. We've got our man. Let's roll the 727 Bluff Drive. Strange, George? Yeah. All the numbers on this side of the street are even, and 727's an odd number. No problem. It just means the place we're looking for is on the other side of the street. Have you looked on the other side of the street, George? There are no odd-numbered houses on Bluff Drive. The address is a phony. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was Thursday, 2.43 p.m., and it was over 110 degrees in Sri Lanka. Luckily, we were working MathNet out of Los Angeles. My partner is George Franklin. The boss is Thad Green, chief of detectives. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We had been working on the problem of the missing baseball and had gone down one blind alley after another. Still no solutions. Just have to keep at it. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to see if there was anything we had missed. Notice something strange, George? Yeah. All the numbers on this side of the street are even, and 727's an odd number. No problem. Just means the place we're looking for is on the other side of the street. Have you looked on the other side of the street, George? There are no odd-numbered houses on Bluff Drive. The address is a phony. We're still working on it, Howie. Can I do anything to help? Not yet, son, but if we think of something, we'll call you. My dad will be home tomorrow. We know, Howie. We're doing everything we can. I hope it's enough. Done? If I don't get that baseball back, he'll tar and feather me. Uh-huh. He'll put me in the stocks. We're trying. Probably run me out of town on a rail. Goodbye, Goodbye Howie. Howie. Did you run a make on Clarence Sampson? Uh-huh. It's amazing what we can do with these computers, isn't it, Kate? I remember when we had to do it by hand. It took weeks. He goes by a lot of aliases. Charles Charlie Sampson. Alias Carl Sampson, that's with a C. Alias William Howard Taft Sampson. What have you got on him? Spent 13 years in state prison for robbery. 
paroled six months ago. Uh-huh. What kind of robbery? Gold bars. It took 10 of them in 1975. Know what they were worth? Nope. Well, according to this, a gold bar weighs 330 ounces. Uh-huh. And gold was worth $160 an ounce back then. Let's see. 330 is about one-third of a thousand. One-third of 160 is 53. So each gold bar was worth $53,000. So 10 bars at $53,000 each, he got away with more than half a million dollars. Probably worth a lot more today. Uh, the gold bars, I mean. Uh-huh. And they never found the gold? Nope. You know how he did it? Swiped the gold, I mean? How? Took it out of the top of Fort Knox. You know, Kentucky, the bluegrass state. Out of the top. How did he do that? Helicopter. We needed more information. I asked Jenny to check the specs on the XY313. George was checking some house moving companies to get an approximate weight on Mrs. McGregor's house. Thank you very much, sir. I've got some info on the XY313. It's got a range of 600 miles. It's a lot of range. How's that? Look. The missing baseball was here in Burbank. You mean the house? Yes, but as George says, you got the house, you got the ball. Uh huh. Go on. Look. On this map, one inch equals 20 miles. So for 600 miles, we would measure 30 inches, which would take us all the way up to Oregon. So the house could be almost anywhere. But the helicopter's range is 600 miles. It would have to fly back to base after dropping off the house, so it couldn't have flown more than 300 miles each way. But that would still take us all the way up to here. That's still too much ground to cover. Jenny, Kate, I got an approximate weight on the house. The moving company said it weighs about seven tons. 14,000 pounds. The XY313 can handle that. It could carry up to 16,000 pounds, but the 600 mile circle is still too big. Wait, we're forgetting something. I know, Martha told me. Green peppers for the meatloaf. You sure you can't come, Jenny? Positive. Kate? Uh-uh. You guys ever had Martha's meatloaf? Yep. What we're forgetting is that the helicopter was carrying a house. Now that extra weight would cut the range back even further. But how much? Yes, sir, me again. I was wondering if there was any way you can tell me how far the helicopter flew. You can? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, I see. Thank you. Got something? Blackboard. He said he refueled the tank this morning. It used 2,400 pounds of fuel. At top speed, it burns about 4,800 pounds per hour. 2,400 divided by 4,800 equals one half. That means it was up in the air about half an hour. Right. What kind of speed does it make? The XY313 has a top speed of 160 miles per hour. So in a half an hour, it would have flown half that far, or 80 miles. He flew someplace and returned to the base. That's right. We take 80, divide it by 2, and we get a radius of 40 miles. We can cover that. 40 miles, I mean. Let's take a look at that other map. On this map, 1 inch equals 5 miles. So 8 inches equals 40 miles. This is the helicopter base, so the house could have been dropped anywhere within this circle. But look, 20% of that circle is Pacific Ocean. We can eliminate that area. Uh-huh. They wouldn't have put it there. Right. It would sink. All we have to do is concentrate our efforts in this area, but it's still going to take time, and we need that baseball by tomorrow. Wait a minute. We're forgetting something else. A helicopter would make a lot of noise carrying a house. Let's question some of the residents in the area and see if they heard anything. That's going to take time. I've got an idea. Hello, Howie? No, it's not your father. I asked Howie and his friends to ask people all over the area if they heard or saw a helicopter on the night the house was snatched. They began to call in with their reports. Uh-huh. And no one saw anything, but a couple of people thought they heard a chopper. Uh-huh. What's that? Nothing unusual except what? Television reception on the Fritz. Thanks, Howie. Anything, Kate? Some people complaining about their television reception that night. Funny. So was the guy we talked to. What guy? The guy in Tuesday's episode, remember? He complained about his TV reception, too. Mathnet Monday. Hello, Nell. Find out anything? Some complaints? TV reception. Are you in the Whitechapel area? Thanks. George. Those complaints are all coming from the same direction. Mapnet. Yes, Mr. Bricker. More complaints about TV reception? What area? Thanks. Same direction, but further southeast. 
And it must have been the helicopter that was causing that interference. Look, it's giving us an arrow. The house has to be somewhere along this line. What we've got to figure out is where that interference stopped. Call Howie. George called Howie and told him to follow the arrow until he ran out of interference complaints. I checked the map. I'll get it. It's probably Martha. Sure you can't come, Kate? She'll be awful disappointed. Uh-uh. Bathnet. Oh, hi, Howie. I thought you were my wife. Really? The complaints stop at Scenario Circle? Nothing beyond that point? Terrific, Howie. The house has got to be here. We've got our man, George. Let's roll. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names have been made up, but the problems are real. It was Friday, 2.43 p.m. We were working the day watch out of Magnet. Clouds covered the L.A. basin. Rain had fallen near the coast. Somewhere a loon cried over a lake. We were still trying to solve the problem of the missing baseball. We decided to review yesterday's episode to refresh our memories. George called Howie and told him to follow the arrow until he ran out of interference complaints. I checked the map. Really? The complaints stop at Scenario Circle? Nothing beyond that point? Terrific, Howie. The house has got to be here. We've got our man, George. Let's roll. These houses have been here forever, Kate. Uh-huh. But how about that little one over there? Looks a little out of place, doesn't it? Uh-huh. And it does look like Miss McGregor's house. A little bit, yeah. Except for one thing. Her house was green with green shutters. This one is green with white shutters. Let's talk to the owner anyway. Look, George, I'm missing porch board. Just like the porch at Mrs. McGregor's house. This must be the place. Could be a coincidence, Kate. You know, I mean like a happenstance. Uh-huh. Well, nobody's home. We'll just have to come back later. This must be the house. We called Mrs. McGregor and Howie to headquarters to ask some additional questions. We asked Mrs. McGregor about the floor plan of her house. Are you sure this is what the inside of your house looked like? That's it, miss. If the ball entered from the front door, it would have come here. Uh-huh. And bounced off this wall, probably ended up in this corner. Well, let's get out there and look in that corner. That's correct, except for one thing. Ma'am, that's not a wall. That's a fireplace. Then the ball is in there, right in the fireplace. Miss McGregor will be in touch. Howie, come with us. We'll have your father's baseball back in no time. Uh-oh. Aren't you happy? Just one thing. It was cold last night. What if they had a fire in the fireplace? We were sure we had the right house. All we had to do now was prove it. Afternoon, sir. I'm Monday. Frankly, math net. I never work with a net. Go away. Wonder if he could ask you a few questions, sir. The answer to your question is no. What's your name, sir? Oh, that's easy. Chuck. Charlie. Samson. Simpson. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. My mother sewed it into my socks. Uh huh. What if you could tell me how long you've lived here? Lived here? All my life. I was born in this house. Really? Yeah. I went to school here. Got married here. I've been here a long time. Yes, sir. We're looking for a missing baseball. You have an unusual occupation. Yes, sir. I wonder if you've ever seen this. I can't see a thing without my glasses. I must have mislaid them. Are those your glasses over there? Oh, sure. Thanks. I'm always mislaying them. My glasses, I mean. Sure wish I didn't need them, you know, to see with. Yes, sir. About that baseball. Nope. Can't help you. I never saw it in my life. We have reason to believe it might be in your house. Wonder if we could take a look around. I can tell you that baseball is not in my house. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Did you have a fire in your fireplace last night? Are you kidding? This is L.A. That's a fake fireplace. Hey, kid, where are you going? You know you're in my fireplace. I got it. I got the ball. Congratulations, Howie. Your father will be happy. 
Yeah, and I'll be able to grow up and lead a normal life. Probably meet the girl of my dreams, have a place in the country. Uh-huh. Well, Samson, still say it's your house? Hey, a baseball in the fireplace doesn't prove anything. A lot of people keep a baseball in the fireplace. You're a lucky kid to have a real autograph from Babe Ruth. I'll say. A real baseball in a fake fireplace. Yeah, and some fake logs on top of some fake gold bricks. Fake gold bricks? Fake gold bricks. Fake gold bricks. So that's where he hid them. Uh-oh. All right, you got me. I stole the gold years ago. I spent some time in prison. That's all behind me now, so... So? Can I go now? You're forgetting one thing, Samson. Yeah? We got you on a 484. 484. Stealing a baseball. Why'd you steal my father's baseball, Mr. Samson? I didn't steal your father's baseball. I stole the house. Why did you steal the house? It wasn't for sale, and I needed it. There are plenty of other houses in the greater Los Angeles area. Why this one? Looks like this. When I stole that gold, I had a partner. He got away, but also he took the gold with him. And when I got out, I traced him here. He was living in this house when he got arrested for another crime. So I knew he must have hidden the gold in this house. So you put the nab on the house to get the gold. And it was here all the time. My partner built a fireplace out of gold bricks. Can you beat that? Should have known it, too. Oh? Used to be a bricklayer before he turned to a life of crime and corruption. Would you say that crime does not pay? I sure would. Not the way I do it, anyway. We handed Clarence Sampson, alias Charles Sampson, alias Carl Sampson, alias William Howard Taft Sampson, over to the ever-vigilant Los Angeles Police Department. Congratulations, partner. Sampson was arrested for filching the house, which he was made to return. And he was found guilty of baseball theft and sentenced to an appropriate number of years away from society.